Hear this. Every Christian in the hospital is healed. Every poor Christian is rich. Every disfavored Christian is highly favored. The problem is either that they have not grown in faith or they don't know how to take it by prayer. The word is katalambano. They don't give you, you take it. It's available but you take it. So prayer is the act of taking it. Prayer is the act of collecting it. Prayer is the act of seizing it. Because that rebellious being called the devil will not stop. He fought your father, he will fight you. He fights bishops, he fights apostles, he fights prophets, he fights Christians. Anyone who is standing has pushed him back. Anyone who is standing has stopped him. And this morning, everybody will receive the baptism of prayer to stop the devil. When I learned this, all my prayers changed. Before, when I want to deal with something, I lie on my bed and I'm saying, Father, thank you because this thing will happen. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. And I believe is delaying. Many seasons are passing. When I understood how it works, anything I want to deal with, I rise up with intensity. Even the devil knows when I start praying, he fears. Because if he delays me in that prayer, I will deal with many other things that I was not planning. So when I stand up, the aggression, see, flies perch on good food. When you carry fire, your delay will end. Flies perch on good food. When you stand up, the devil is afraid that he will become a casualty. Because the aggression, the intensity with which you fight, my God, you came into my house, in the name of Jesus, you are punished. In the name of Jesus, you are cursed. In the name of Jesus, see, the, the, the declarations you will make, he will never come there again. But many don't know how it works. Many don't know how it works. Carry intensity and face that mountain. You will be shocked that that mountain will vanish. And even this morning, every mountain you came here with will go down. And so for you to walk in this covenant, you must know how to fight. And fighting is what we do by prayer. Because the devil will come. And when he comes, he doesn't come to talk. In John chapter 10 verse 10, it said, The devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The devil doesn't care if you are the light of the world. The devil doesn't care if you are a city set upon a hill. The devil doesn't care if as he is, so are you. He wants you to show him. So the devil will ask every one of us questions. The devil doesn't care if by his stripes you are healed. He wants you to show him. The devil doesn't care if you are the head and not the tail. He wants you to show him. The devil doesn't care if you are lifted. The devil doesn't care if you are prosperous. He wants you to show him. And the way we show the devil is by warring in prayer. And so in Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 10, it said, Be strong in the Lord and in the power. He said, my brethren, finally my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, he said, put on the whole armor of God, wherewith you will be able to stand all the wise of the devil. He said, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We wrestle not, we wrestle not. So if you don't know how to fight, you will not survive. He said, Having done all to stand, stand therefore. So man must know what to do. I thought it was a joke. In five years, six people died in my family. All of them Christians. That was when I woke up. I said, come on. What is going on here? And God told me, fight for your inheritance. If you don't stand your ground, the devil will make a mess of you. Because the devil is asking a question. The question he's asking is that, did God really say? That's the question he asked Eve. Did God really say? He's coming to ask you, are you healed? He's coming to ask you, are you prosperous? You are the one to rise up in prayer and say, get behind me, Satan. I am healed. If you don't know how to do it, God has given you all things, but you'll be looking for all things. Four dimensions of prayer that makes you walk in the fullness of the covenant. The first is the prayer of faith. This is the simplest so that even babies can handle something in God. The prayer of faith is the first way
to get what God has made available to you. And there are four simple things you need to know about the prayer of faith. Number one, identify the mountain. Don't come and say every power, every attack. No. Identify the mountain and face the mountain. You know why? You may not yet be strong. God's servant may stand here and he will say, every force fighting you, I address them. He's talking from a throne. You may not have gotten there yet. So what you need to do to have victory is at your level when you start, identify your mountain. And when you identify your mountain, don't talk to God. Talk to the mountain. Talk to the mountain. Tell the mountain what you want. And when you tell the mountain what you want, number three, don't doubt in your heart. Why? Because the word of God backs it up. So number four, keep your evidence. This is the first way to walk and activate the covenant. He said, when you come before a mountain, if a mountain is before you, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall say not to God, to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast away, and does not doubt in his heart, he shall have whatsoever he says. Now, God has given you everything, but for you to have everything, you must understand the prayer of it. So somebody is hearing me today, cancer has been plaguing you and you are there saying lord if you want it will happen what god wants is to happen or what we be will be there is nothing like what we be will be everything that we be is made to be you may be in the pit nothing is working and every day you wake up you are crying listen don't cry over destiny fight for destiny put away pity party stand up confront your mountain and begin to fight them begin to deal with them you will be shocked not too long. Everything God said about you will happen. You will face sickness for 21 days, for 40 days, and you will not take no for an answer. I was sharing with them a while ago, the Canaanite woman, she came to Jesus and said, my daughter is thoroughly vexed of devils. And Jesus said, no, it is not meet for me to give the children's bread to dogs. And the woman refused to go. So there are people who are so rugged that even when God says no, they refuse. I'm not talking about the devil. God, God, say no. They say, Father, we are standing on your word. We will not take no for an answer. The woman said, Father, even the food that falls from the table, the dogs take it. And Jesus said, great is thy faith. If a man can tell God no, is it the devil that can stop you? The problem is that you are not brutal. Some things require intensity. When you become serious, the devil will know is a dogged kind of prayer. What you are doing is that you are ironing it out with the devil. You say on this particular matter, you must get out. And you will stay there until he gets out. This death in this family must stop. This sickness in this family must stop. This poverty in this family must stop. And you wake up, you say sickness, go back to where you came from. In the name of Jesus, every devil bringing this sickness, I command you, I curse you, I rebuke you. When you do it after a while, the devil will get tired. You know why? The devil is not God. His resources are limited. If he discovers that you will not back down, he will go to the next person that will back down. You know the beauty of faith? The thing is delayed not by the power of the devil. It's by the weakness of your conviction. Your faith answers are not regulated by the devil. He's not that powerful. They are regulated by your conviction. If you come to a point where you will not take no for an answer, the answer will come immediately. And so those who command instant resort, they have a dogged conviction. And so the devil knows he will not need to waste his time with them. Because if he wastes his time with them, he will fail in many areas where he should wait. I decree over someone, your answer will come now. I've taught many people this truth. And they had instant testimonies. Instant. This morning, we are going to have instant testimonies here. Number two, by thanksgiving. There is a mystery about thanksgiving. Many don't know it. That's why they struggle. The reason most of us don't see answers is that we substitute thanksgiving for lamentation. We substitute thanksgiving for murmuring. When you murmur, you kill the power of God. When you give thanks, you activate the power of God. Because when you thank God, there is multiplication. When you thank God, there is enlargement. When you thank God, 
there is victory. So if you want to maximize this covenant, one thing that should not be lacking in your mouth is praise, is thanks. In John chapter 6, from verse 5 to verse 11, when he carried 5,000 men to the wilderness, not counting women and children, after three days, Jesus, the world, was teaching the world for three days. And three days later, the people were helplessly hungry. So, it's not just receiving the word. There are mysteries you must understand. And Jesus said, give them something to eat. The disciples say it's impossible. You can't give them something in the wilderness. Even a year's wages will not be enough for everybody to have a bite. He said, give them something to eat. He said, no, let them send them home. He said, if they go home, they will faint. Give them something to eat. When Jesus saw that they were not believing, he said, what do you have? They say, a young boy here has five loaves and two fish. He said, bring it. And Jesus collected it. What can five loaves and two fish do before 5,000 men? But there's something, if you add, can change it. Jesus lifted it up. I thank you, oh Father. The moment he thanked the Father, he said, take, give them. If you were the one that collected it, what would you do? Give who? From where? From who to who? Even me, I'm hungry. Maybe I should start with myself. Give them. Who are them? 5,000 men. Five loaves. Give them. And the miracle did not happen in the hands of Jesus. It happened in their own hands. As they were breaking it, the bread was multiplying. I wish I'm able to look at their face. When they broke it, the bread grew out. They broke it, it grew out. Somebody would drop it first and say what's happening. They broke it, it grew out. In Jeremiah 30, 19, he said, out of them shall proceed the voice of thanksgiving. Out of them shall proceed the sound of melody. And he said, I will multiply them. They shall not be small. I will increase them. They shall not be few. When you start thanking God, everything you do will work. Some cannot thank God. Even when God answers their prayer, they can't come back to testify. That's why, although they have the new covenant, they are not seeing it. Because thanksgiving is lacking in their lives. Number three, how do you enter the fullness of the covenant by prayer? Prophetic prayers. Do you know how prophetic prayers work? Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 9. See, I'm teaching you these things so that when you do it, you will not just do it with zeal, but with understanding. In prophetic prayers, you speak as you are commanded. In Ezekiel 37, it said, The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit and set me down in the midst of valley full of bones. Now, why am I reading this scripture? So that you will know the size of your problem is not the challenge. It's your lack of understanding that is the challenge. In the prayer of faith, you are dealing with a mountain. In prophetic prayers, you are dealing with dry bones. Hear what the prophet said. Verse 2. He said, He caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, they were very small in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. The bones were what? Very dry. It shows you how dead some people's situations are. But see what happened next. And God wanted to test him because God needed to know where he was mentally. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. You know why? He has already accessed the bones. He knows the bones were very dry. And by human intelligence, there is nothing you can do about dry bones. Dry bones are forgotten cases. Dry bones are out of hand situation. He said, only thou knowest. Because if I answer as a man, the first thing I will say is that it's impossible. Next verse. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones say unto them oh ye dry bones hear the word of the Lord so the answer to dry bones are prophetic words hear the word it doesn't matter the magnitude of the situation if you catch the word your answer have come so don't look for the dry bones 
look for the word. Look for the rema. If you catch the rema, the dry pole is not a problem. This is how we walk in the covenant by prayer. In verse 5, hear what he said. Thus said the Lord God unto these bowls. Behold, I will cause bread to enter into you, and ye shall live. Go to verse 6. And I will lay sinews upon you, and I will bring up flesh upon you, and I will cover you with skin, and I will put breath in you, and you shall live, and shall know that I am the Lord. So you see that when you are dealing with prophecy, it's the integrity of God that is on the matter. It's not about you. It's about God. You will know that I am the Lord. Go to the next verse. So, I prophesy as I was commanded. That's the key. It's what you hear, you say. It's what you see, you say. Jesus said, the works that I do, the words that I speak, is my Father that is in me that doeth the works. So he was operating based on what he heard and based on what he see. That's why every believer must hear the voice of God. He said, my sheep hear at my voice. Because that voice is a weapon. In verse 8, and when I beheld, lo, sinews and flesh came upon them and the skin covered them. The question is, where did they come from? They say, as, as thou knowest not how bones are formed in the womb of her that is with child. That is how you know not the ways of the spirit. It is not your department to find out where it came from. It's not your department to find out how it will happen. Your job is to what? Prophesy as you are commanded. Declare what you hear. Declare what you see. That's all. And he said after they were covered, he said there was no breath in them. Go to verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Did you see what was going on here? There was no breath in them. The guy did not become creative. I said if the first one has happened, anything will happen. No. He waited. And he said prophesy to the wind. Son of man, say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O bread, and breathe upon this slave, that they may live. Verse 10. So I prophesied, as I was commanded, and bread came into them, and they lived. But see the thing now, they didn't just live. When the answer comes, it will not resemble what you are expecting. It will be bigger than what you are expecting. He said, and they lived. And stood up upon their feet an exceeding great army so dry bones are actually a great army in disguise the breach is prophecy and so when a generation wants to make an army out of dry bones they must hear and declare so prayer is not just shouting prayer is also listening and declaring that's why sometimes when you go to pray the situation is big but the Holy Ghost keeps you still in that stillness sometimes after three hours Sometimes after four hours, the voice of the Lord will just come. As you declare that thing, no matter how simple it sounds, it can cause dry bones to become a great army. It's by prophesying as you are commanded. It's by speaking as you are hearing. The excellency of this truth is in the quality of manifestation it commands. Some of the greatest testimonies I have seen were because I heard in my heart a very quiet and simple voice that didn't sound powerful. Finally, it's warfare. There are some things happening in your life. You will go and lock the door. You will wear a boxer and a singlet and say, today, not today. It's either the answer comes or the answer must come. You will not take no. And you start praying. You know the way the Bible says we should pray that one? It says pray all kinds of prayer. You pray in tongues, you prophesy, you dance, you thank God, you cry, you declare. Anything that prayer means to you, you do it until you see the answer. In warfare, you don't stop until you see answer. The Bible said Elijah, the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, he stood before the king and said, as long as the Lord God of Israel live, before whom I stand, there shall be no rain or dew. When the time was done for the rain to come back, in 1 Kings 18, from verse 40, the Bible said Elijah went to the mountain. And he knelt down and put his face in between his thighs and he was praying. That kind of prayer does not stop until the answer comes. That's why it is called warfare. He prayed. He told Elisha, go and see. 
Elisha said, there's nothing. He kept praying. Seven times, he said, go and see. And Elisha came and said, I see something like the fist of a man's hand. He said, now my prayer has ended. In warfare, you fight until you get the answer. In warfare, you battle until you get the answer. Our generation is weak. We don't have capacity to tarry. Somebody is dying and his mouth is shut. Somebody is dying and he's sleeping. No, when you sleep, you will die fast. When things are going wrong, that's when to start fighting. That's when to start praying. It's better to use your last energy fighting than to wait until death meets you. And everybody who fought never died. Your problem is subduing you because you are not fighting. No fighter is defeated. When you start fighting, God will join you. Imagine if David sat down. Who told you Goliath would have come down? David was fighting from the beginning to the end. The brother wanted to discourage him. He refused. King Saul wanted to discourage him. He refused. Goliath cost him. He refused. Rather, he charged at Goliath. And when God saw that he was fighting, when he threw the stone, God blew on the stone. Do you think it's the stone that killed Goliath? A stone can't kill a giant like that. Goliath is three meters tall. About 9.8 cubit. Is it a boy of 70 years that can break his core? When David threw the stone, God blew on it. So what collided with Goliath was the power of God. That was the same thing that happened with Moses. Moses wanted to cry. God said, go forward. And as he stretched his rod, the Bible said with the blast of his nose, he parted the Red Sea. As somebody wakes up to battle here this morning, all your answers will come to you.